Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, glory, hallelujah. It's to our God. It's to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. God, my Savior. God, my Yeah. 
every phrase. Every phrase like God. Every phrase. 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 Every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say offering time. Uh, somebody say offering time. Put your hands together for offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right after offering, we're going to go to one more song, and then we're going to the Word of God. Is that okay? Before I pray uh, on the offering, I'd like to let you know that uh, we need to keep Sister Carol Barrett's family in prayer uh, with, her, with the loss of her life on Sunday. See, we may have lost a sister. But the kingdom has built, has, has gained an angel. Somebody give God praise. She is going to be truly missed. And she was a, a true soldier of Christ. So, and you can see her flyer up there. Amen. So, as soon as we get the information on our homegoing service, uh, you will be notified either... Uh, we thought we would probably have it this, this Sunday, but we don't have it yet. So uh, we will let you know uh, either by email, text, or phone call. Amen? Amen. Somebody give God another hand praise. And while you're preparing yourself, uh, hold on for a second. Uh, Sister Deborah, somebody call Deborah. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. That's okay. Bring him in. Bring him in. No, no, no. Bring him in. We're going to stop. We're going to uh, stop for a minute. Brother Huff, come, come here for a minute. Come here. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on. I did that a couple of weeks ago, and I said no. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the pastor wanted to pray. Is that okay, y'all? Can we stop for a minute? Brother Huff, come on, come on, Gene. Is this okay, y'all? Is this okay? See, it's it's not about it's not the schedule of service. It's about being obedient. When someone is hurting and they're having an issue, and the Spirit of the Lord speaks and says, do it now. Do it now. Somebody say, do it now. We're not up here to show. We're up here for obedience. I love this man. This is a son of God. But he goes through, how many of y'all go? We go through all the time. But the power of prayer, somebody say the power of prayer. The Bible says if two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst of your issues, of your problems. He's in the midst of your healing, your deliverance. Amen. He can come on down here. I want the brothers, I want the brothers to gather. Usher, come on down here. Come here. Come on down here. Out of that bullshit. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on. Come on. And those of you ladies that are sitting. I want you to stand on your feet if you can, and I want you to raise a standard against the devil. Raise your hand towards Brother Huff. 
Amen. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Heavenly Father. This is the day that you've made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, you know the things that this brother is going through. You know the issues that Donald has in his body, Heavenly Father. But Father God, you're the healer. You're the deliverer, Heavenly Father. Father God, he came to your house to give you praise. To lift you up, Father God. We bind the enemy that's trying to come against his body. In the name of Jesus. In his bones, in the name of Jesus. In his muscles, in the name of Jesus. In his back, in the name of Jesus. In his neck, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In his arms, in the name of Jesus. In his hands, in the name of Jesus. Steady them, Lord. Steady them in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. You said in your word, if two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in a mist, we are green, Heavenly Father. Father God, touch his hands, Heavenly Father. Bring down the swelling in the name of Jesus. Make them back normal, Heavenly Father. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Go into the rib, Heavenly Father. Go into the kidney, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Go into his hips in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. I declare, I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Ah, go into his legs in the name of Jesus, Father God. Go into his ankles. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Go into his feet, Heavenly Father. Mm. Go into his kneecaps in the name of Jesus. Father God, continue to cover his blood. Cover his body with your blood, Jesus. Cover his mind in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, send a standard against the devil that's trying to come against him, Heavenly Father. Send your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let him be a witness of your healing power, Lord. The doctors have said one thing, Heavenly Father, but you, you are the physician. You are the one that said so. And we're touching and agreeing that this brother... Your child will be healed in the name of Jesus. Healing is coming right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God a glory in this place. Give him a blessing in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Walk in his healing. Walk in it. 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 Somebody say, walk in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Lord. Somebody say obedience. Obedience, obedience, obedience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you on this time of giving, Heavenly Father. The Bible says, will a man rob God? in tithes and offering. Tithes is, obe is a place of obedience. Offering is from your heart. So when we're giving, we're not just giving to the church, we're giving because we're being obedient. And Father God, bless the ones that are able to give at this time. Bless the ones that are also sending electronically. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now you're in the hands of the ushers. Amen. We thank you for your giving and your liberality. We're going to do one more song, and then we're going to hear a word from our own elder, Charles Weaver. Amen. 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 Are grateful. How many of you are grateful today? I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the big dreams we won. I could go on and on and on about your word. Because so brave 
people just to pray to Lord. Oh, from my heart for the issues of my heart is great I am grateful for the things that you have done. Sing it with me. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories. The victories we won. About your word, because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful, dear, to praise you, Lord. Oh, be from my heart, or the my heart is from my heart. If you're grateful for anything that God has done for you, stand to your feet and give him a shout of praise. I know I've been standing all night, all morning long, but that's okay. That's okay. Just keep on praising him. Keep on being thankful. Because we are grateful. 
But he didn't have to do nothing for us. But he did it anyway. But God is just good like that. He's just good like that. He knows we don't deserve it. But he's good like that. Because when we're under his grace, it's his grace that sustains us. It's his grace that carries us. Grace that heals us. We're grateful. From the issues of our heart, we're grateful. From the depths of our souls, we're grateful. With all my mind, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that it was Jesus a wretch like me to be here before you. I'm grateful because they couldn't use anybody for me. And degrees, but he used a little wretch like me. Somebody that don't know nothing. Somebody that ain't nothing. But he will use a wretch like me. I am grateful today. I'm grateful. Because without God, where would I be? I don't know, Brother James, but I, I just celebrated 61 years. And you know some of the homies ain't alive to, to say that. Amen. Some of the homies are still pouring beer on the sidewalk saying this is to the homie. This is to the homie. Yeah. But here we stand. Amen. Amen. And saved and sanctified. And being sanctified from grace to grace. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If, if truth be told, out of us know about this grace. Thank you, Chief. Hallelujah. And I've been hearing grace mentioned all day. Sit down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I've been hearing grace all days from start to finish. Uh, 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 so I know I'm on the right track where God wants me to go. So, you know, I know we're all kind of, you know, stiff in the joints. So what I'm going to do is ask you as I pray, would you please just raise your hands to God? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, merciful Father. In the name that is above every name, I'm asking you, O oh Lord, to bless your people today. Lord, let manna fall from heaven. Let your agape word, let your love flow upon your people today. Lord, look upon this broken and marred vessel. Use me to your will, O oh God. Lord, you poured this out for me all month long. Now I want to give it back to your people. I want to give you the glory for it, Lord, because it's not about me. It's about you. It's about your sheep. And I want to feed your flock, Lord. So use me as you see fit. And may you be glorified, magnified in it. In your blessed name I pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank Amen. I'm going to ask if you would just turn to the book of Romans, if you would. And we're going to go to Romans 5, verses 4, 1 through 4. Oh, give me clearness of speech, Lord. If you say it, say hey, amen. If not, say wait for me. Bless you. Romans 1, I mean, Romans 5, verses 1 through 4. Thank you, Lord. And I know this might be, you may have heard this before, but it's no harm in getting a refresher course. And it reads, therefore, having been, just, been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of glory of God. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Ooh, glory to God. May the Lord, you may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing and reading to his word. Hallelujah. And so the, the theme I want to speak to you about today is the strangeness of amazing grace. The strangeness of amazing grace. Uh, I was wondering about this song, Amazing Grace, because it's like the Christian anthem. They used to sing it back in the day before they came along with these new groups to, of gospel singers that you can't even, you don't even know who they're talking about. You think they're singing love, thinking they're singing songs to Jesus, but you never even hear his name mentioned. And they're more like hip hop than they are gospel. I think when gospel hit mainstream, it, it just got all out of whack. And so I, I researched it to find out who exactly wrote this song. And come to find out, it was a man, it was, a, it was written by John Newton, a captain of a slave ship who dealt in human transportation and human misery from Africa to Europe to America. One day while out to sea, a storm arose. Half his men were washed overboard, and he had strapped himself to the wheel of the ship. And in those moments, he cried out to God to have mercy on them. After 11 hours, the storm calmed. After arising safely home, Newton did not venture out to seek slaves no more, you think? Newton was eventually ordained and began pastoring his own church, speaking against slavery across this country. Oh, how amazing grace is. So I was hearing the testimony of the saints about what they did over the weekend and how they went out and they spoke to those, the prostitutes, to the gang bang bangers, anybody that you could find or see you spoke to. It's those same people that amazing grace is for. We got to understand it's amazing grace that follows us even when we're unsaved, even when we're wretched, even when we are in our worst of sins. It is grace that follows us. For the psalm says, grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And grace and mercy follows us when we're not saved. Because it says, when we was yet in our sins, yet when we was weak. Glory to God. So when we go out there, and then when we leave this church ground and we leave the church people, don't forget that you are saved by grace. And that those same people that you speak about, the same people that we have a tendency, after we leave church, have a tendency to speak about in a negative way. The same people we have a nerve enough to look down our nose at. The same lost people. But we got to forget, where were we when God saved us? Where were we before we even called on the name of Jesus? What were you doing before you called on the name of Jesus? What was, what was you doing before you acknowledged that it was grace that followed you? What were you doing? Was you turning the bottle up? Was you tucking your lip? That joint when you coming out of the motel with your boo. Where were you before grace found you? So when we look down our nose and when we walk the street and you and you grab your purse, remember that same gang member that you see you grabbing your purse might be the same one who becomes a pastor who preaches for you, who prays for you, and put money in that purse that you grabbed on too tight. That same hooker that you look down your nose at might 
can't be the same one who put an anointing oil on your legs when it hurt. That's Come on. That's the prostitute. On. Might be the same one who prays for your child to come home. Hey. Just remember, saving grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Once was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace. It wasn't you that saved you. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again. Yes, I think I'll say that one more time. It wasn't you who saved you. It was through the blood of Jesus by the grace of God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm sorry to tell you, Oprah, there's not many ways to God. There's not many trails to God. Only through the blood of Jesus. Only through faith in Jesus Christ. What he did on that lonely hill called Calvary. Through the grace of God. Because you didn't walk up to this throne by, up to this by yourself. It was God's grace pushing you. It was God's grace urging you. It was God's grace that whispered in your ear, in your heart. You know you need me. So call out the name of Jesus. It's not by us. It's not by any good work we've ever done. Or ever could do. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. As those of us who forget, those of us who are saved, because sometimes we have that tendency to forget because we get so caught up in doing church work that we forget that it's God's grace that pushes us to keep doing it. It is because we love him, not out of legalistic motives, not a self-serving motive, but because we love him. We do the work. We do the good work, which he has foretold, who he has put to our names before we was even thought of, before we was an edge in our daddy's crotch, before we was a twinkling in our mother's eyes. Jesus has already assigned good works to us. But all we had to do was call on him to be able to move in that grace. Because you can't move on your own. Because Isaiah 64 says, all of us have become like one who is unclean. All our righteousness, all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We are shriveled up like leaves and the wind blows and our sins sweep us away because when you try to do it on your own you're sinning apart from god it is sin and apart from god it is no good apart from god is like the most stinky racket don't just imagine what them stinking rags are they are offense to him but when you do it to his glory when you do it because you love him and because you do it because you want your reward. See, I, I, I want to see Jesus. I don't want to bow because it says every tongue must confess. And every knee will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, there's two things to that. Now, either you're a sinner and you're going to be fearful, but you won't be able to hide. But if you're a saint, you're saved, and you're going to cry tears of joy because you're able to kiss the master's feet and say, Jesus, thank you for saving me. Jesus, thank you for your saving grace. Hmm. 
No, hallelujah. Romans 3, 24 says, being justified freely by grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Oh, amazing grace. How strange it is that it will save the worst of us. I heard that Jeffrey Dahmer, a person who was a butcher, a murderer, but at his end, while he was in prison, called on the name of Jesus, and they said he turned around 360 degrees. 360 degree turn, he turned around, and he gave his life to Christ. He lost his life while he was in jail, and people say good for him. But those of us who are blood-bought and saved and sanctified, we know when you call on the name of Jesus from your heart, we know that he is saved. So we may see him. But somebody that we thought was all saintly and God, God feels and stuff, may not be there. Because it's all by God's grace who is going to be there and who won't be there. Hallelujah. Romans 2 says, to whom we also have access. <laughs> we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. Because we know when it's all said and done, we will be in the presence of God's glory. We won't have to fear. We won't have to cry no more. We won't have to sorrow. There won't be no more sickness. There won't be no more poorness because we'd be richer than Donald Trump when we get there. Hallelujah. I won't be here much longer before you. But it says hope. Hope. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Carol, Sister Carol, my sister, I know she can't hear me but I'm gonna speak for her because I heard when she was sick, she still praised God. When she was on her way home, she was able to still sing a song of glory to him. That's hope. That's hope beyond hope. When things were looking the worst for her, when her race was about done, she still had hope. She still had hope. Hallelujah. And I kept asking God, I told my wife, I said, you know, this message, I have never, usually when I have a message, I struggle with it. I don't know about you, Elder, but you pace the floor all night long. You, you pace the floor all night long and you, you lie on your face and you, you, you don't, you know, you, you can't put it together. And by the time I finish, my tr little trash bag in my basket in the office is filled with paper. But this time, this time, God dealt with me as he always do, but it was grace that he dealt with me. He gave me an understanding what grace is. So you're looking at a man who had nothing but a ninth grade education. But God saw fit to give me a job. God saw fit to have given me a job everywhere I went. I've been a supervisor in positions that I had no business being in. Never had a degree in my life. There have been people that come in my job who don't know that has a degree, but have not been where I've been. So you can't tell me that grace does not is not sufficient. Grace is sufficient. And I want to tell you, saints, when we fall, because none of us, near one of us, and if I'm using improper language, sue me. You ain't getting nothing anyway. 
There ain't never one of us in this place perfect. We are full of faults, full of weakness, full of potential to sin. Sometimes we sin when we know we're sinning. But it's God's grace. God's grace. What is God's grace? It's his unmerited, undeserved favor. You can't earn it. You can't be good enough to earn his grace. But we are responsible to live in a way that is pleasing unto him. You cannot live willy-nilly as you see fit. You have to live according to his word. But he gives you his grace to live according to his word. He gives you his word. He gives you his grace to be able to walk in an upright manner. It's his grace. And when we sin, when we fall, when we falter, and we will, Brother James, that's just the plain, simple, godly truth about it. As long as we in this flesh, because in this flesh there is nothing good. But God's grace, when we call Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help do I know. When we confess our sins, it says he, are, he is faithful to forgive our sins. And not only to forgive our sins, but cleanse us from all righteousness. Amen. So he takes his grace and he cleanses us. He takes his grace and he covers it. Because it's different than when it just, you know, you just kind of flip the pages over and then you don't. No, he takes his grace, his love, and he covers it and he remembers it no more. We have a problem with walking in his grace. We have a problem with understanding his grace. So we hold on to those things. And sometimes we take them back to him and he asks us, what, what are you talking about? I no longer see it. I no longer see your sin. Because you, it, oh, it's sin. It's his grace that covers it. Hallelujah. I'm finished now. Because it's grace. It's grace when you see a small child who has cancer says, yes, Jesus loved me, for the Bible tells me so. It's grace when you see a, a man that is homeless who will stop when you talk to him. He say, well, child, God loves me. It's his grace that keeps me. It is grace when you see somebody who is wretched and still could say that God is we're still with me and God is still working on me. It's his grace. It, can I tell you, can tell you this track record of grace. Grace was there in the beginning when God said, let there be. That was grace. When God took a little lump of dust and formed a man and breathed to him and he came a living soul, that was grace. When God created that same man and put him to sleep and took a rib out of his, out of his side and the man woke up and said, whoa, man. And then that was grace. That was grace. When God took Noah and put his family into the ark, that was grace. When God took Moses, a man that was out of the a man that was a murderer, and delivered the children of Israel, that was grace. When God opened the Red Sea and all of Pharaoh and his chariot and his army drowned, that was the that was God's grace. When God took jo Joshua, jo Joshua and told him to march around Jericho seven times. And when they shouted, God's grace brought down the walls of Jericho. That is grace. It was grace that came through 42 generations. Through a virgin named Mary. Oh, Lord. It was grace that came through 42 generations through a virgin named Mary. This same grace healed a blind man. This same grace healed a lame man. This same grace made a man come from the grave. This same grace took a few little fish and a five loaves of bread and fed 5,000. This same grace the same grace, the same grace was beaten all night long.
The same grace was marched from one hall to another. The same grace that took a beating for you and I. The same grace they hung him on a cross. The same grace was in a grave three days. On a third, on a Friday, and on a Saturday. But all Sunday, this grace got up. This grace got up. You ask me what is this grace name? I tell you right now. Grace name is Jesus. Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of the Father. My Savior. Your Savior. My Savior. The world Savior. It's Jesus. His name is Jesus, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I believe, I know that Jesus is this grace. He is the living water. He is the bread from heaven. He is the living grace. He is the living truth. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. He is God and God Himself, God glorious, Prince of Peace, Salvation, Deliverance. He's Jesus, 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 Jesus. I can't live without Him. I can't do without Him. It's Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noon day, Jesus in the midnight hour, Jesus when I'm hungry, Jesus when I'm thirsty. It's Jesus. I tell you, Brother James. You said your strength is low, but I'm telling you right now, just that you told us earlier, if you stand on your feet and give God the glory right now, he will give you back your strength. He will put the soul back in your body. He will heal you in a way that the doctors can. I tell you, brother, huh? Just keep on holding on to the God's unchanging hand. He will deliver you. But if he don't, and his grace is sufficient for you, trust him. Keep holding on to him. Grandma, I came by to tell you today, it may look gloomy. Nobody may be listening to you on that street. But just remember, it's God's grace that sustains you. It's God's grace that strengthens you. It's God's grace that will watch your mouth. One day, one day, that lady that you talk to, one day she's going to come back to you. I don't know when. I don't know how. But one day, she will come back to you. And those of you who have way with child, I know about that. I thank God well, Pastor Lofton having good sons, but as those of us who serve are ain't so good, no matter what you try, no matter how you pray, but I tell you this, you just got to keep on believing, because if Abraham believed at 100 years old, body old and feeble and broken, and he still believed God, even though he did not see it. He saw his son, but he didn't see the whole promise fulfilled. But he believed. He did not waver. He did not waver. He did not give up. He did not bend. He did not break. But he kept on believing. Even when he closed his eyes. And now look at us. We are the children of Abraham through faith. Faith. Faith alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I heard a preacher say, I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I know Jesus is all right. How I know because I tried him. When I called on him when I was sick for seven long years, he healed my body. When my son, I was gonna lose my wife. She had a heart attack. But when I called on the name of Jesus, she's still here. Hallelujah. God's unmerited, unearned grace and favor. Hallelujah. One time I was alone and didn't think I was gonna have a family. But God gave me four children and 11 grandchildren. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, sister. 
Don't give up. Don't give up. Because we have access to six of those grandkids. You will have your children's church again. You will have your children's church. Because God sent me back home. Now, I got to tell Pastor, and I might have to do this all over again. But I'm telling you here, my brother, you've been asking me, so when are you coming home? I'm telling you here today that me and my wife, we're home because God sent us back home. Nothing happens by choice. God sent us here by his grace. And by his grace, I'm going to do all that I can do to be a help to you, my brothers and sisters. So just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Just hold on. Hold on. And know that his grace is covering you. His grace is covering you. His grace never leaves you. His grace never forsakes you. Even when you let go of his hand, his grace still is holding you. You know, I used to take that child by the collar. You know, they, they get only so far. That's God's grace. Because he's never going to let you get too far. When you think you can't be forgiven, God shows up in an amazing way. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Hallelujah. 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 Because of his grace. Bible says I will never leave you or forsake you because of his grace. Somebody give God a hand praise in this place. Hallelujah. I know for a fact that was a word from on high. When you feel it in your bones, you know that was a word from on high. When your hair stands up on your, on your arm, you know every word was a word from on high. Jesus is doing something new. And see, when God brought Elder Weaver back, also myself, God is doing something new. Come on, somebody. To be under the leadership of Pastor Lofton. Amen. So he is doing, he's doing a shift. He's doing a turnaround. Somebody say a shift. And see, there isn't just a shift in the church, there's a shift in the community. And we are a part of that shift. But because of his grace and mercy, we have to hold on to that. Amen? Amen? I know somebody's been in a revival today. If you've been in a revival, stand on your feet and give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Now see, when somebody said, when somebody asked you, what was preached today? You tell them to go to Romans 5. One and four. Somebody said Romans 5. One and four. There's no excuse for you not to know that. Because that was a word from on high. Somebody give him another praise in this place. I don't know about y'all. I used to say years ago, I said, you ain't got to go home. But you got to get up out of here. I feel like I want to stay until tomorrow morning and do a shut-in. Hello, somebody. See, revival to a shut-in? 
when we walk out of here, boy, it's going to be some great. Somebody say glory. Somebody say because of his grace and mercy. Elder Weaver. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And see, that time when you struggle, that means because the enemy is trying to come against you. But when you get that breakthrough, see, when you get that breakthrough, when you get that breakthrough, somebody say breakthrough, God is going to give you a word. See, the word got to come to, the, to, to, to you first, to the messenger, and then it's got to go out to his people. Amen? Somebody give God one more praise in this place. Everyone stand to your feet. Glory, 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 glory. Y'all, I can keep on going. Anybody else want to preach? Anybody else want to bring a word? I'll put it this way. Anybody need some prayer today before we leave here? If you need prayer, come on up to the altar. Come on up to the altar. Come on up to the altar. Don't, don't let the devil tell you you don't need it. Everyone needs it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on back up here, Elder Weaver. Come on back up here. Get your mic. Out of the bush. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Come on closer. Come on closer. I'm going to have Elder Weaver do a collective prayer. But the Lord just told me, get ready for the shift. Get ready for the shift. There is going to be a mighty move of God in your lives, individually and collectively. See, when I used to bang for the Inglewood family bloods, this is the best gang that you can have right now. Sold for Christ. And see, when we take our marching orders from the head king and be obedient in those orders, yes. God is getting ready to do a shift, a move. Some of you have been hurting in your lives. Some of you have been wanting something from God that you haven't told anyone about. But God is getting ready to move a shift. He's getting ready to move some things out of your way. Out of your somebody look at your look at your neighbor and say out of your way. And see, he's gonna make a clear path. Come on down. Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Mm, nobody like you. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Bless you your name oh heavenly father oh bless your name jesus oh blah blah but you get us oh heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus oh right now just touch my sister lord lord i don't claim to know what she's standing in need of but you know right well oh god you know her heart, you know her mind, oh Lord. She is your handmaid. She has accepted you and believed in you, oh Lord, and she needs a change right now. Whatever her condition may be, Lord, whether health is bad or whether children are not doing what they're supposed to do or she needs a job, whatever it may be, oh Lord, we know that you there's nothing too hard for you to do. Lord, we ask that you make a way. 
make a way out of no way. Just as you open the Red Sea, oh Lord, open the, open the Red Sea in her life right now, oh God, and take her across. And Lord, when she goes across, she will give you the praise. She will jump out of her shoes and she will give you the glory. Work it for her, Lord. Work it for her in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We thank you for what you're doing, Heavenly Father. We're going to do a tag team prayer. Is that okay? Thank you, Jesus. Father God, Sister Jones, Heavenly Father, you know what's going on in her body, Heavenly Father. You know what's going on in her mind, Heavenly Father. Give her peace through your grace and mercy, Father God. Give her peace in her spirit, Heavenly Father. Let the struggles not be difficult, Heavenly Father. You said in your word that you make our burdens light in the name of Jesus. Father God, thank you, Jesus. Father God, she's trying to take the world on her shoulder, Heavenly Father. Family issues, family things that are going on. She's trying to take on the responsibility, hold everyone up. But Father God, hold her up like Moses was held up when he was weak in the name of Jesus. Out of the bullshit. Oh, hold her up in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give her strength, Father God, as she continues to walk in you, Heavenly Father. Give her strength as she keeps serving you, Lord. Give her strength as she keeps giving you praise, Lord. Give her strength, Lord. Anoint her body, Heavenly Father. Anoint her back, Heavenly Father. Her legs, Heavenly Father. Mm, you made the lame man walk, Heavenly Father. You made the crooked man stand straight in the name of Jesus. Out of that bullshit. You took the man out of his bed that couldn't walk and made him stand in the name of Jesus. Father God, we're holding on to you, Heavenly Father. We're holding on to your word in the name of Jesus. And continue to have your way, Lord. Continue to have your way in our life. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, touch my brother right now, oh God. Touch him in a mighty way, oh Lord. His heart is pointed towards you, oh God. His heart, his mind, he loves you, Lord. You're making a change in his life, oh Lord. But Lord, I ask right now that you do something miraculous in his life. That he can have no doubt that it's your hand. Lord, your hand is upon this young man. Your hand is in his life. Lord, if he wanted to get away from you, he couldn't. Lord, I ask right now that you would enlarge his faith, enlarge his territory. Touch him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That every young man his age that he speaks to will wonder how and why is he such a condition as he is. Calling on the name of Jesus. That they too want the same thing. They too will call on the name of Jesus. Every young man that he comes in contact. Give him the boldness of Paul. The courage of David. That no matter if they say no or not. That he will still keep speaking your name. He will still keep speaking your word. And Lord keep anointing his voice. Lord he sings all Zion songs. And we need those songs again. In, oh God. Some things we need to get rid of, but some things we need to keep. Those old songs of Zion, we need to keep, oh Lord, because it soothed the heart. It soothed the soul. And use this young man to your glory, oh God. Use his voice to your glory, oh God. He's willing, oh Lord. He's willing you know, God, no one's making him. He's willing to be used by you. Use him, Lord. Use him, oh God, and give him your word till he wants no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for Gabe. We thank you for everything that he's doing in the church. We thank you for his obedience. But Father God, continue to touch his mind, Heavenly Father. Continue to touch his heart, Heavenly Father. Father God, there are doors trying to close in his life. But Father God, we proclaim and declare those doors will be reopened in the name of Jesus. His finances will be restored in the name of Jesus. 
Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, continue to help him to look vertically up to you. But not to look at anyone else, Heavenly Father, because you are the head of his life. But at times there's a struggle. Come on, somebody. At times there's a struggle, Father God, but you understand because of your grace and mercy, Heavenly Father, that you are a forgiving God. And Father God, continue to bless him, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless his residence. Continue to bless his finances. Continue to bless his heart, Heavenly Father. Gave the doors of my Gave the doors of my Serve him harder than you ever Keep it OG style. I'm telling you. Keep it OG style. I hear this from the Lord. Keep it OG style. Keep it how you were raised. Yes. 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 Train up a child in the way that you Get your own. Amen. Amen. Not your daddy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not your mom. Yes, Lord. Get your own. Yes, Father. And watch out, God. Watch out, God. Amen. Amen. Watch Father, you who make a way out of no way. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful couple right now. Lord, we speak peace and blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask right now, we ask, oh Lord, that you will make a way out of no way for them. Lord, we ask that whatever their heart's desire is, we ask, almighty God, that you would just bless them right now. Uh, bless them in such a way that they will not be able to contain it. Bless their home, oh God. Bless the children. Bless the, their family in the name of Jesus. Bless his ministry, oh God. His media ministry. For as much needed, oh God, and especially in this place. Lord, we ask that you will bless him with the finances, oh God. To do the things he wants to do here, oh God. Open a door, oh God. Open a window, oh God. Oh. Cause it to flood out, oh God. Yes. So much so, oh God, that... Oh, glory to God. Lord, we just ask right now that you just touch this couple. Let peace reign in their home. Let peace reign in their hearts. Let peace reign in their minds. Whatever the enemy comes to toss against them, oh God, it shall not work. But no weapon formed against them, O oh God, shall prosper. Shall prosper. In, the name. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. O oh Lord, make them a power couple, O oh God. Yes. Cause them to yes. pray together. Yes. Call them, cause yes. them to call on your name together. Yes. O oh Lord, that anybody that comes across them, anyone that comes across them will be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. They were a gift when they went He's trying to keep up. I hear this from on high. Don't rush.
started talking about me, my family, and everybody else. Them was the ones that wanted to get me killed. Them was the ones that wanted me to go out and get killed. Believe me, there was a couple of times that they had me out there with them. But after all said and done, I said I got cut loose. But as I cut them loose, God had it himself. So remember, walking with you. God did something, made a change in me in the midst of this message, of this sermon. He gave me the hope. He gave me the confidence to know it's his grace that's always been on my life. I'm two brothers from the hood, and I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought I'd be dead and gone, ran with the wrong crowd. But God's grace and his mercy... You, you, you can't beat it. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for what went forth today. We thank you for raining down your spirit upon this place. We thank you for the shouts of joy that went to your name. Lord, we just praise you right now. You're a good God. You are good to your people. You're the good shepherd. Lord, there is no one like you. No one can love us the way you love us, oh God. Lord, we just thank you right now. Lord, we ask that you will just put your guardian angels around about each and every one that's under the sound of my voice. 
but it will keep them from all dangers seen and unseen. So we come back to this place at the appointed time and at the appointed hour. Lord, we just ask that you would just go with your people as you have been with them in this place. Go with them back home. Take them back to safety, oh God. Take them back to safety. And continue to bless their hearts. Continue to bless their homes. Bless them on their jobs. Bless them at school. Just continue to bless them, Lord. For you never sleep, you never slumber. Your mind, your eye is always watchful on your children. We give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. What I say to one, I say unto all, watch and pray. You're now dismissed.